Marco Casper's rise on our draft board happened pretty late in this season. He was always considered a first rounder, at least, but it's really his performance in the SHL playoffs and the World Championship that convinced us that he was worth a top pick. In this video, we're going to break down one of his SHL playoffs games to understand his strengths, weaknesses, and how he projects to the NHL. In this first shift, we see Casper's pressure game. The way he uses his speed to force the opposition to rush their passes on the breakout. He does a good job. The only reason the other team is capable of connecting their passes is because Casper's team is a bit late on their line change. Ruggle gets the puck back and Casper attacks space in the wide line. Many players of his age here will continue to skate toward the corner, but Casper isn't afraid of defenders. He sees that he has the advantage over the opponent because that opponent is skating straight at him at a poor angle that opens up the middle of the ass. To avoid a poke check, he baits it by presenting the puck. He then toe drags around the stick of the opponent and backends the puck on net. Here we see Casper's physical abilities. There is a race for a loose puck that his teammates win by getting inside positioning on a defender. Casper does the same thing a few seconds later. The puck is on the wall. The opponent is closer to it, but Casper wins it by cutting in front. He shows great technique. He cuts inside the opponent's space, so close, that the opponent is forced to raise his hands. He can't make a play on the puck anymore. He can only try to shove Casper away. But it doesn't work as Casper is in a low and balanced position. Casper rims the puck to his defenseman, who sends it back down. And then, anticipating a point shot, Casper attacks the net. He arrives first there, before the defender, which allows him to win the inside positioning again. He places himself between the goalie and the defender. That inside positioning, allows him to screen, but more than that, it also allows him to be first on the puck that rebounds because he's closer to it. Unfortunately, the puck continues to bounce and Casper has trouble taking control of it. Already from these two shifts, we can see that Casper is an inside driver. His physical skills are quite advanced. In this shift, Casper attacks the wide line and then cuts inside. He gets the puck and then tries to slip it in between the goalie's pass. He finishes the sequence by attacking the net again to support another point shot. Casper gets another one-on-one -on -one in this shift. The difference here is that he doesn't have a clear advantage like in the previous one. The defender is approaching him at a better angle. Casper tries to force the opponent to commit to a poke check, but the move fails. Even if the move would have worked, I'm not sure it would have led to anything interesting for Casper. One way he could have solved this situation is to change speed on reception of the puck to force the defender to go with him down the wall, before cutting back to create a delay play. This would have, maybe, allowed him to connect with one of his teammates in the slot or created more space for him to make another play. We can see that, while Casper is great at attacking space, he's probably someone who is better at taking advantage of mistakes, of bad positionings, than at creating those mistakes. There might be a ceiling to his one-on-one -on -one ability. Casper shows more passing adaptability in this sequence, which is an important aspect of playmaking. <laughs> He supports his teammate on the wall, gets the puck dropped to him, and then surveys the ice. Many players would have attempted a pass right there, but it has a very low chance of success. Casper is more patient. He sees that the whole defense is collapsing on his teammate, so he runs around the net to try for a far side wraparound. Casper anticipates that the goalie had time to move to follow him and close down the near post, so he aims the puck to the other side of the net. Casper might not be a high-end playmaker, but he's still a smart player. He's capable of reading and adapting to the play. He can leverage one decent scoring chance into a better one if he gets more time. Nothing really special happens in this power play shift, but I still want to highlight this puck reception from Casper. Again, his puck protection ability is very advanced. He's aware of pressure. He has identified the defender that might be coming at him before he gets the puck. Because of that, he manages to plan his reception. He doesn't stop the puck in between his two feet, but further away from the defender, and he also turns his back to the defender inside the reception to protect the puck. Just like in one of the previous shift, he cuts a defender at the hands, which prevents him from using his stick to make a play on the puck. This little play from Casper allowed his team to establish their presence in the offensive zone. In this shift, we see Casper's in-zone offensive play. It's mostly good, but it could be even better. He starts by supporting his teammate well. He identifies the space behind the defender and jumps into it. He doesn't have a play, so he turns back and reloads the puck high to his defenseman. 
a simple and good choice. Casper is very net focused. It's a great thing for his NHL projection, but there might be sometimes better plays he could try. Here, his team has already two players in front of the net. A fake drive there to set up a move toward the face-off circle would have provided a more interesting option for his defenseman at the point. It would have avoided overcrowding the net front area. In the next play, I again like Casper's adaptability. He loses track of the defenseman on his back, but he doesn't force a play. He leveraged an open play into a better one. Casper goes to the net again here. This was another occasion where he could have maybe found a better shooting spot by moving high instead. The last shift gave us a look at Casper's off puck game. He supports players and teammates well. His movements are not wrong, but they could be even more creative. Casper takes advantage of a missed play from the opposition here. He gets the puck in the neutral zone, but he doesn't quite have the momentum to cut to the net. So he finds another play. He makes a drop pass to a teammate. The idea was great. With better execution, it could have created a scoring chance. This play is another sign that Casper is smart and adaptable. If a play closes, he finds another solution. This is a nice little defensive play from Casper. It looks like his team has regained the puck here. In this situation, most players his age tend to run up the ice for a pass. But Casper anticipates a turnover, and he's right. Because he didn't run up, he's in a position to help stop the play. He replaces his defenseman and shuts down the only play of the puck carrier. This is a very mature read from Casper. This is a shift that NHL scouts probably love. Casper starts by taking a hit to make a play. He knows the hit is coming, but he still gains the zone and makes the pass anyway. He then supports the next play and makes another pass before running to the net. I like this little dip that he does before attacking the slot. There's a sense of timing in Casper's game. He wants to arrive before his defender in the slot, but he also avoids arriving there too early to prevent a long battle with the defender that would stop him from touching the puck. Casper gets his stick on a rebound and his teammate completes the play. This is just one game of Casper, but it shows many of his strengths. His game already looks quite NHL ready. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see him start his NHL career next year. He has the habits, the net drive, the defensive positioning, and the skills, the handling and passing game to be an effective part of a team's lineup already. Casper's puck protection is very refined for such a young player. He anticipates the play, he adapts to defensive pressure, and he finds ways to beat it consistently. He also has the defensive engagement and the supporting ability to play down the middle in the AHL. Projecting him to a top-line role might be a bit too optimistic, considering his lack of high-end skill and creativity at this stage. But at the same time, Casper is the kind of player that every team looks for in the playoffs. His ability to retrieve pucks, protect them, and attack the front of the net make him the perfect complement to top playmakers. They could earn him a solid role in a team's top six. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. You can also check out epringside.com for more prospect analysis.